Hello everyone, uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, bonsoir et uh, ça va bien, j'espère que vous êtes avec nous. So, uh, if you remember the six nations uh, participating in the LTED seminar and the project, is, uh, you are familiar with this, you can see the pictures when Richard goes down there. And uh, um, so my objective for today is look at where we are now with the LTAD project. Look at LTAD, what is LTAD, why do we need LTAD, LTAD is a paradigm shift, 10 key factors influencing LTAD, the 10 assets or domains of LTAD, stages of LTAD and conclusion. And you are all familiar with this because this is my second webinar. You, you have one webinar going through very much the same thing. And also, uh, I was there personally and delivered these lectures for you. So you, have, you will see a, a few familiar slides in the presentation. Um, where are we now? Well, actually, we are far behind. Five projects by six countries equals 30 LTED projects. The draft was due on October 15th. Actually, three uh, were submitted, and three is under uh, review by Trinidad and Tobago. So Trinidad and Tobago is delivered the uh, drafts, and actually they are they are very well done. Congratulations, TNT. Um, I we emailed you a template a while ago, and you were asked to fill out the windows, which are indicated in red. We also provided information about sport-specific LTED models to help with sport-specific normative data. And frankly, uh, we're using the template, this project can be done in one weekend, one full weekend, with the participation of the, of the experts, because 90% of the information is there. You just have to fill out sport-specific and nation-specific information uh, to uh, to the template. So it's it can be done very quickly, but just have to get together and and, and, and do it. So uh, remember, if you want to teach Latin to Johnny, you have to know Latin and you have to know Johnny. Uh, if you want to teach rugby or any sport to Johnny, you have to know rugby and you have to know Johnny. Well, we know rugby or the sports very well, but we do not know Johnny or Jane from age 9 to 16, period. We are mostly superimposing adult programs and not, not providing developmentally appropriate programs for uh, age 6 to 16 years of age. Uh, so LTED is a, is a paradigm shift. What is different with LTED? As you can see, it's an optimal training, competition, and recovery program. It is not a training and competition program, but training, competition, and recovery program with regard to developmental age, considering average, early, or late maturing athletes. Uh, easily measurable biological markers, helping decision making about the optimal content of the training during puberty. Uh, exploits the sensitive periods of faster adaptation to training during pre-puberty, puberty, and only post-puberty. Uh, is based on the concept of physical literacy, which provides the foundation for lifelong physical activity and high-performance sports. And uh, as you, Drew was there not a long time ago, and now you are fully familiar with the situation, how important physical literacy is in LTAD and, and sports programs. The programs are characterized by developmentally appropriate. This is the buzzword, developmentally appropriate. Six years old, 10 years old, uh, 17 years old, 19 years old, or adults. The program must be developmentally appropriate and providing meaningful competitions also for all ages and stages. We use the adult periodization principles and, and programs uh, to help the needs of developmental athletes. So we call it proper pubertal periodization. And if you recall it, uh, it was a, a request by all the six nations. Uh, that Then I go back the next time that we have, will have an extra day. Then all day we will be working on a pubertal periodization. 
basic principles of periodization and how can we use periodization for developmental athletes and elite athletes. Uh, so it, in a match, as a matter of fact, as you can see, LTAD is a tool for change. Key point, developmentally appropriate training, competition, and regeneration program for all ages. This is the buzzword in LTAD. If, if we look at the uh, three major outcome uh, of, uh, of our sports, is basically physical literacy, as I mentioned, Drew was just recently there, and physical literacy is the foundation for excellence and active for life, for recreational participation sports. Um, here are the 10 key factors of uh, low to metric development, physical literacy, specialization, age or developmental age, sensitive periods, intellectual, emotional and moral development, Excellence takes time, periodization, competition, system alignment and integration, and continuous improvement. And we are focusing on the process and not the outcome. Win, win, win all the time. We have to uh, focus on proper training all the days. Physical literacy, I do not want to waste any time on this because Drew was just there, spent two days with you on physical literacy. So we can go to, to factor number two, specialization. As we discussed earlier, uh, very few early specialization sports exist. Uh, gymnastics, uh, rhythmic gymnastics, uh, uh, figure skating, uh, diving, uh, swimming by age eight. All, all the other sports are late specialization sports. And late, late specialization sports are, as are all the other sports, and very crucial that specializing early in a late specialization sport contributes to one-sided preparation, injuries, early burnout, and early retirement. It's very important because many parents, coaches, and administrators believe if you specialize early, that will create an advantage. No, it doesn't create an advantage, except the early, very few early specialization sports. Developmental age, as you can see, all of those kids are the same age, and look at the difference between them. This is a huge factor in, in LTED. Uh, you have seen the x-ray, two 14-year-old boys. The left side is 12 years of age, biologically or, or bone skeletal development. And the right side is 16 years of age, meaning that they are four years apart developmentally. Uh, 13, 14, 13, 14 years old swimming girls, and you, you have seen these this, uh, uh, pictures before. Uh, two 14 years old speed skaters, and they compete against each other. And uh, 14 year old swimmers, uh, as you can see on the left side, uh, look at the muscle development, full hormonal maturation. He's, a, he's an adult, and the others are growing kids, and they compete against each other in age group competitions. Developmentally appropriate. What's appropriate on the left side and the right side, that's obviously totally different. So we have to find the developmentally appropriate programs. Um, there is an advantage and disadvantage to be an early or late maturer. Uh, about 30% of the population is early or late maturer. Uh, about 5% about, uh, of the population is very early or very late maturer. You see, the ad advantage is uh, if you are an early maturer, that you are bigger, stronger, you can do the job, and often you become lazy because you don't have to fight for it. If the late maturers are not quitting because they are small and not as strong and, and powerful as the others, they stay in the system. They will be doing extremely well. And we know, as we discussed earlier, that in practical terms, the late maturers are the real now. Sensitive periods, uh, five basics, uh, stamina or endurance, strength, speed, skill, suppleness or flexibility, and the additional structure or structure, psychology, sustenance, uh, schooling, and the socioculture. Trainability, uh, 
based on chronological age is speed and suppleness, and based on developmental age, skill, endurance, stamina or endurance and strength, and the biological markers of the onset of the growth spur, pH after growth decelerates, and the onset of the menarche uh, for, for females. Additional five S is uh, structural structure, uh, how to measure, and we went through on the details, uh, if you remember the workshops, and this is the way we are monitoring standing height, uh, sitting height, and arm span. By this way, we can identify which uh, part of the body is growing and can make decisions about developmentally appropriate training programs. You received a copy of this, electronic copy of this. This will give you everything about the measurements. And if you don't have it, you go lde.ca and you will find it under resources. This is a typical growth spurt, as you can see. The onset of, or the beginning of the growth spurt, a PHV or the fastest rate of growth is identified, and the menarche is a biomarker for girls. For boys, it's more pronounced, it's happening later, and peak strength velocity is happening approximately 12, 18 months after peak height velocity. The additional psychology, mental preparations through the stages, it's very important. And remember, you received the electronic copy of this document also, which identify mental fitness principles for all the stages of LTVD. Very huge, and uh, uh, because of the climatic condition, regeneration can be a very crucial uh, issue here. Obviously, uh, uh, nutrition, hydration, rest, uh, sleep, and uh, re regeneration are crucial important parts and regeneration is mostly neglected by many many sports you have recovery fast recover faster from training rules and competition rules uh, very important sleep is the number one training factor if you remember and uh, uh, again this is available for you on, on the website so uh, uh, look it up if you need to Communication, well, it is a schooling is important because um, I'm just referring to BC school sports that the coaches who are coaching volleyball, basketball, soccer, and athletics, they don't talk to each other and the programs are interfering with each other. So in the school system, you have to make sure that there's an excellent communication between the coaches who are coaching in the school. Sociocultural socialization, why are sports socializing the general values of, of society and sports socializing? That sports socialization is when we are socializing the sport specific, the subculture of the sport. It's also important, you know, when you travel for competitions, uh, uh, especially if, uh, other countries that you have to educate the history, literature, music, architecture, markets, etc., for the, for the competing athletes to enhance their personal development. Mental, cognitive, emotional development. Uh, uh, build into the stages now. On LTD 2.2, you can find mental, cognitive, and emotional development. And uh, as you can see, the, remember the chart, on the top is the stages of physical development, the middle stages of intellectual development, and the bottom stage is the stages of emotional development. It's all laid out and well, well explained in LTD 2.0. Uh, periodization, we talked about this a great deal, and uh, so what is how to 10 steps of quantifying uh, planning uh, protocol, you have a copy of that. And the reactive periodization is when we are planning for a pubertal athlete who is going through the puberty and regularly changes height, weight, size, etc. So we have to react to the tempo of growth of the individual athlete. It is the layout of the periodization. Obviously, uh, winter sports are uh, non existent, practically non existent in your countries, but summer sport is a layout. And very possibly, 
and this can be different for you because your climate it, uh, is different. So uh, we have you have to adjust it according to your nation's needs. Uh, this is a massive undertaking in basically system alignment and integration when we try to uh, uh, integrate and align education, health, uh, recreation, and communities in, in the sport programs. It is the layout. Uh, I suggested that you can use this chart, but you have to uh, use it according to your own nation's uh, conditions and situations. So you have to edit the right side of the document for system development and performance priorities. This should be nation specific. Well, remember I asked you how to design your system of competition. And you know that practically nobody designed the system of competition. It just happened. It just evolved, and we are still using it because we always used to do it that way. You need to do all you need to do is a review the competition and restructuring, and the new concept now. And we discussed this periodization of the competition calendar, meaning that you have to have enough preparation time for the competition, enough recovery time after competition, and enough time for preparation to get ready for the next competition. So we have to periodize the calendar. That's why we need the structuring because the old structures are still out there and those are not, not helping athlete development. Uh, it was a very powerful saying years ago, it takes 10 years of extensive practice to excel in anything. And uh, we decided to change it to excellence takes time because it can be less than 10 years it can be more than 10 years. And this was a 10 year rule, 10 year, 10,000 hours. And uh, we learned from the US research that it takes 12 to 15 years to medal at the Olympic, uh, at the Olympic Games. Kaizen or continuous improvement, um, it is a, a continuous improvement, elimination of waste. Like we published the LTED document in. 2005 and in 2013 we came out the second edition 2.0 and already we are working on the LTED 3.0 uh, because new information comes into the system, new discoveries and we have to adjust moving forward with the latest information. So as you can see uh, if you remember the first three stages, active start, fundamentals, and learn to train, that's developing physical literacy. Train to train, train to compete, train to be is excellent, and finally, uh, retiring for, for competition is its life on physical activity. Active start, fundamental movement skills, gymnastics, swimming, running, uh, wheeling is with the wheelchair sports, and this is very flexible. This is needs a lot of unstructured problems here, but get involved in some gymnastics where we get running. And the fundamental stage is approximately uh, eight to, uh, eight, six to nine years of age, uh, and this is uh, fundamental movement skills should be developed. Now we are structuring the problems here. And as you can see, the FU and capital letters, because the fun is so important at this stage. Learn to train stage in developing fundamental sports skills. The more uh, skills you develop before you specialize in, in your sport, uh, then the, the better athlete or player you will be. Uh, train to train, building the engine and sport specific skills. And this is practically pure. 11, 15 girls and 12, 16 boys uh, in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, that's very possibly in your countries this will be at an earlier age. Uh, so you have to find this out uh, uh, nation specific. This is very huge because uh, during puberty the, the systems are extremely well trainable. Uh, during the train to compete stage, optimize the engine and develop sport, even and position specific skills. Train to win, maximizing the engine, even position specific skills, and aiming for podium performances. And finally, active for life enter at any age after developing physical literacy and have a healthy life of physical activity participation. It is the dynamic vision for 
the LTE model. As you can see, the physical literacy is the first stage in active start fundamental learn to train. And you have a choice. Are you moving to participation stream or are you moving to the excellence stream? If you decide to move to excellence, uh, train to train, train to copy, train to win, and you can retire anytime you wish for to active for life. But in order to participate in the participation stream, you have to develop physical literacy. So in a nutshell, this is long-term equity development. Um, I visited all the six nations from May 17 to June 4th, and we discussed with all the details what I am uh, describing here very shortly here. We had a whole day to deal with this issue. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a quick summary. I'm uh, repeating myself in the third time I'm giving this lecture and we have all the slides, everything ready for you. So uh, do you have any questions or suggestions? Thank you very much, Ishtan. So right now, if anybody's got any questions about this presentation that you just witnessed, or perhaps any questions about how your project your project is currently going, anything that Ishtan can shine a little bit of light on or offer some insight in, uh, please feel free to ask now. You can either ask by typing your question into the question pane, or you can uh, you can put your hand up as well. Uh, and if I see your hand is up, then I can, I can turn on your mic and you can actually ask him the question yourself. So whatever you prefer. Well, if there, if there are no questions, or I would like to suggest to uh, suggest to you that I will extend the October 15 deadline to January 31st. So you have almost two months to do a few days of work, uh, which, as I mentioned, with the template, it can be done quite easily. Uh, in that case, I I will have to draft ready and when we have the date for my next visit, I mean the months and the date for next visit, I will be able to edit your document and when we meet the second time, it will be a brief meeting with the whole group and we will be able, we will be doing sports specifically. And I would just like to take a moment here and let everybody know that we've actually received projects from Suriname and um, Yes, it is. Uh, I haven't received from Suriname and the Virgin Island. Uh, I have received, as I mentioned earlier, from Kabir, I received three, uh, three projects and three is under review. Kabir, your question, can you explain the link between fundamental movements and wheeling? You see, as I mentioned, maybe it was too quick that wheeling is for the wheelchair sports, for the uh, physically disabled athletes and wheeling is a fundamental uh, movement skill for the wheelchair athletes. Just like the run jump throws uh, with the uh, healthy athletes. So uh, I haven't received it from Elisa, I will receive it, I, I will definitely look at them. And for Suriname, the seven federations are working on it, excellent. It would be nice, uh, we had such a wonderful time in, in Suriname that uh, everybody was very keen. So it would be really very, uh, uh, it would be very important to send it to me as soon as possible. So we're getting uh, we're getting a few comments here. Uh, it sounds like it sounds like this um, 
this recap from Ishvan is, is going to be helpful. Hopefully that will help uh, everybody who's on this call and, and maybe give you a refresher on some of that information. And if there's any, if you've had any gaps up to this point or any, uh, any roadblocks, hopefully this will help you to push past that. So we've got a question here from Cornell. Is there a basic structure for an organization? In other words, Tennis Association for Developing LTAD. Yes, uh, the Canadian tennis document is available for you. Uh, it was uh, it was published a while ago. It is extremely very well done, and as you can see, Canadian tennis is doing excellent. Lately, at the international uh, uh, competition, and a lot of it is based on LTAD development. Great. We've got a question here from Kabir. Can you suggest how we can start a kiddie academy that focuses on physical literacy? Uh, you have to advertise physical literacy and convince the parents to enroll the kids to be physically lit to, to be able to be physically literate. And I think the guidelines are out there. A lot of publication on, on physical literacy available. I believe you can use it quite easily. Great. And then we've got another one here. Mr. Nam, if then we have a coach whom we would like to have a moment to ask a question, would it be possible to do it through audio? Yes, absolutely. Um, if you can raise your hand, I think I see you here. Okay, so if you're ready, I'm going to activate your mic right now. Yes, good evening, Mr. Istvan. Uh, how are you? This is Sabdai speaking from uh, Suriname with uh, Triathlon uh, Union. Uh, I had a, a small report on that. But the question is still that we, we struggle with or we have a, a challenge that uh, I'm, I think I'm talking too much so I need somebody else to sell my story. Who uh, would be the best seller for us? I, I, are you asking us or are you yeah. asking people? No, I'm asking you because you, you were in Suriname and, and I think that you maybe have seen some person I could talk to to help me out on this sport occasion. Well, report. what I'm suggesting you that if we can set up a, a, a Skype conversation between you and I or your people and, and I, just like I did it with Trinidad and Tobago. We had a, a Skype conversation to discuss all the details what they needed to know. So next week we can set up with Elisa, we can set up a, a, a Skype conversation and we can discuss all the details. Okay, thank you very much for that. I will get in contact with Ms. Fera Fera uh, from the SOC to arrange that for us and then I'll make sure that everybody is uh, uh, here. Present. Excellent, excellent. Make sure that you have prepare your questions before we have the, the Skype conversation. So you're coming with precise questions. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much for the question. Okay, Istvan, can you explain the modules of the leaders course? I am not involved in the leaders course, so you have to possibly approach Paul Jubala, and remember he, you had a webinar with him two days ago. Paul is the, the experts on that. I don't teach uh, in the modules and Paul is an expert. So I'll just jump in there as well. So um, regarding the leader school, um, the modules should be on. We, we sent out documentation, a brochure, and some other information about Leader School. Um, this will be going out again just in case people missed it the first time around. But the modules and all the information will be in that documentation. And if, um, if, if you have any specific questions about Leader School, um, if you want to know if you have a project that's applicable or anything like that, my suggestion would be to email Paul. He'll be, uh, he'll be very eager to speak with you about it and see how we can modify. Uh, or tweak what you're currently doing to fit the leader school course. And again, Paul's Paul Jabal's email is Paul P A U L at sportforlife.ca. That's S P O R T F O R L I F E dot C A. Paul at sportforlife.ca. 
So if any of, any of you wishes to have a Skype conversation with me, please let us know and we will set up the times for, for those exchanges. It usually takes about an hour, less than an hour. Okay, so I have a question here. Uh, what are the prerequisites for leader school? Basically, if you are a, a leader in your community, whether at the community level, uh, in a sport organization, um, and you're working to advance or would like to be working to advance long-term athlete development and physical literacy quality sport in your area, that pretty much is, uh, is the prerequisite we're looking for. Looking for um, either existing community leaders or those aspiring to be community leaders who can take on these projects and help advance them in their community. So again, Kabir, once we send out that documentation, hopefully that will answer these questions. And if not, uh, Paul will definitely be able to have a conversation with you to make sure that uh, that you're totally up on, on everything that's required. But I appreciate the I appreciate you asking about it. We're looking forward to advancing this program uh, down in the Caribbean countries. Great, and if, uh, if any other questions come up once we've ended this webinar, uh, you can reach out to myself, Tyler, T-Y-L-E-R, at sportforlife.ca, Ishtvan, at sportforlife.ca, Paul, as I mentioned, at sportforlife.ca, and I believe many of you have been in touch with Elisa Maruso as well, uh, and she and uh, that's Elisa, E-L-I-S-A, at sportforlife.ca. And also I have a, a, a other email I use, it is ltad.ca. Great, so thank you again, Ishtan, very much for delivering this, and thanks to everybody for taking the time to attend. Uh, we hope that this was helpful. Remember, try to send your project as soon as possible, and I will do my best to send you the feedback on it, and uh, just in case the deadline is extended until uh, January 31st. Unfortunately, what I was told by uh, the Olympic Solidarity and the Canadian Olympic Committee and the Sport for Life movement in Canada, we will not accept any projects after the 31st of January. We have ample time to develop it. Please use the international publications uh, and because the normative data is there. You have to read it, put your country, put your, your, your culture in it, and as I said, it, it can be done in a weekend if you work hard in a group. Thank you very much. Goodbye.